Welcome to this podcast. I'm Bernard Ho, a final year medical student, here to describe to you both basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. This podcast will try to explain both different diseases at the same time as we go through the different definitions, pathophysiology, epidemiology, history and examination, how to investigate and manage these skin lesions, and briefly on their prognosis. Throughout this presentation, the pictures and notes on the left will be depicting basal cell carcinomas, and the pictures and notes on the right will be dedicated to squamous cell carcinomas. It may be worthwhile once you finish listening to this podcast to have a read through the two different diseases separately, again to further consolidate what you learned from this podcast. Basal cell carcinomas, also known as Rolden ulcers, are defined as malignant proliferation of the basal cells of the epidermis, while squamous cell carcinomas are malignant proliferation of keratinocytes. Both BCCs and SCCs are very common in the general public, especially in the elderly population. Both affect males more than females, and a tendency to affect Fitzpatrick skin types 1 and 2 more. Chronic sun exposure plays a massive role in the development of both of these skin lesions. Organ transplant recipients also have a higher tendency to acquire SCC specifically. Again, prolonged sun exposure and UV radiation are the main risk factors for developing BCCs and SCCs. It is also worthy to ask about industrial contact with resin, tar, and arsenic, as these chemicals can increase the risk of acquiring both BCCs and SCCs. Genetic predisposition, such as Garland syndrome, can increase the risk of BCCs, whilst DNA repair genetic defects, such as patients with xeroderma pigmentosum, will have an increased risk of developing SCCs. HPV infection and long-term immunosuppression are risk factors specific to SCCs. Again, lots of similarities between SCCs and BCCs in the history. However, SCCs often grow more rapidly than BCCs. On exam questions, SCCs tend to grow more on lips, forearms, and dorsum of the hands, while BCCs tend to grow more on the face, scalp, and ears. The two pictures here are what the lesions would classically appear. As you can see, the BCC are generally skin-colored lesions with a rolled pearly border, sometimes with telangiectasia the presence of visibly small dilated vessels. The ulcerated center is common, but not specific to nodulo ulcerative BCCs, especially in the early stages of the lesion growth. SCCs are variable in their appearance, but are usually centrally ulcerated with areas of hyperkeratosis, scaling, or crusting. These lesions may appear non-healing, and again, are often on sun-exposed areas. The treatment for both SCCs and BCCs overlap quite a bit so it's worthwhile explaining together. Firstly, patients with malignant skin lesions are at risk of developing more lesions, so patients should be educated about preventing unnecessary sun exposure and the proper use of sunscreen. For superficial lesions, like superficial BCCs or Bowen's disease, curatage and cauterie may be sufficient to treat the patient. Other options include photodynamic therapy, cryotherapy, and topical imiquimod, which stimulates local cytokine release, therefore an inflammatory response, and hence destroying the lesion. Mohs micrographic surgery will allow an excision with a very close margin and confirmed complete excision by a repeated histological examination throughout the procedure. This method is preferred for large lesions and lesions near the ears, nose, and eyes. Where surgery is deemed difficult or impossible, radiotherapy can be considered too. Overall, the prognosis of BCCs and SCCs are quite good. Nearly all BCCs will always be cured. Those cases that recur in the same place can be treated again with the same method or with other methods as mentioned in this podcast. Around 5% of SCCs will metastasize. Risk factors of metastasis are the location of the SCC, such as on the lips, ears, and on previous scars, or deep level of invasion or poor differentiation is noted on histology, or if there is an involvement of the neuro fibers. If the lesion is large to begin with, the patient is more at risk of SEC metastasis. It is worthwhile to note that all patients with confirmed BCC and SECs should have regular follow-ups for a head-to-toe skin examination to rule out growth of the more lesions. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please check out the other dermatology podcasts in this series.